Swearing? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> Thank uh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Is that the start of the app? Okay. <laughs> Meek and We're Mel, to hit. thank you so much for coming in today. Teach me, please. I've been very excited about this episode, girls. Um, firstly, welcome. Thank, thank you. you. Great to be here. Yeah, this is super exciting. Um, obviously, you got your own podcast, Wine with Meg and Mel. And um, today we've got already a few bottles in here. We're going to be going through wine. I think for me, this episode, honestly, was at the top of my list. As soon as I was like, teach me, please. I've always wanted to be that person when you're having a wine yeah. to be able to just do a bit of a flex on people and be like, oh, that's <laughs> this, that's that, without knowing. I learned the word tannin once. Oh, okay. And that was like my that's only sort of word that I use. Right. And no one else sort of knows that in my circles. So they think <laughs> I'm sort of killing it, which is good. You're but a wine geek. I am. Today, I'm really keen to go through <laughs> that. Um, Hey, tell me about your pod. How did you, how'd you two meet? How are you uh, compadres, friends? How did it all come about? Oh, okay, I'll kick off. So um, Meg and I used to work together at a winery when she started, because Meg's a master of wine. This is a It's a really big deal in the wine world. And I thought she was going to be <laughs> such a wanker. <laughs> <laughs> and I was kind of starstruck. And she's not? Oh, she's all right. Uh, yeah. She's all right. Um, we got along really well and um, COVID hit and we're working for this winery and we're like, how do we even get the word out about wine to people? And it just kind of came to us like, let's start a podcast and see what happens. And I don't even know what happened three years later and we have a following and people seem to like listening. So. I know. Great. It's sort of gained its own momentum. So we started it as a way of communicating to people during COVID because we couldn't talk to our retailers, we couldn't talk to our customers, and Mel sort of originally said, oh, let's do YouTube, and I was like, okay. And then she said, oh, no, people want to listen when they're in their car, when they're driving their 5Ks. Yeah. You know, yeah. You've got to make it <laughs> Yeah. So, we, yeah, we just started and we, um, we had no real plan. I've got to say, there was no business plan. It was, there was it's no just, plan. That's the best way to go into it, though. <laughs> Low Game expectations. by itself, I think. Oh, and it's so embarrassing listening to the early episodes. They're such poor quality. <laughs> we recorded it in what was called the Cube, and it's all glass. So you Yeah, I found out that's like the worst form yep. of uh, soundproofing in the world. And we the dogs and, we, uh, yeah, it was wow. not great. Okay, well, but, that's a good sell for everyone to go back and listen to the, to the show, <laughs> that's for sure. Meg, with yourself, though, you are a wine master. That is... Congratulations. Seriously Thank impressive. Thank you. Could you, you know, obviously I know what that there is. There's no but red carpet here. But no, I, 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 we, yeah. Okay <laughs> well, that, okay. it's, it's coming. Yep. Um, we obviously already know what that is. It's a, it's a great thing. But could um, you explain that to maybe someone who hasn't heard of what a wine master is before so and ma- how that comes about? Yeah, master of wine is a... Master of wine, yeah, fuck you, me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry. You can yell at me. You can yell. Right. Yeah. It's like, um, that's so bad. Sorry. So a master of wine, MW, is yeah. a UK trade qualification. They started it in the 50s because the UK was such a big centre of trade but there was no real qualification for it so it's a private institute Um, we all pay fees hideously expensive fees and it's looking at winemaking viticulture marketing and the ability to communicate that's the sort of theory side of it and then on top of that there are 36 wines that you have to identify without it's called blind, so you don't know what they are. So you have 12 whites on one day, do that in the morning, then do your theory in the afternoon, 12 reds the next day in the morning, afternoon, do your theory, and then 12 mixed bag can be sparkling or fortified or could be more red wine and then your theory in the afternoon so yeah and if i can jump in because meg's a little bit too humble it has a five percent pass rate thousands of people go for it every year but there's still only a couple of hundred in the world so it's like a seriously crazy thing to have had i'm yeah congratulations it's genuinely impressive and um can't wait to unpack what we're going to do today (laughs) but when it like going through that do you have to like pick everyone correctly or is there like a the, somewhat of a... They say that you don't have to be yeah. able to get them right, but I think that's absolute BS because I certainly got them wrong the first time I sat and I failed. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I think it's changing a little bit now. It's It used to be very much, if you're in Burgundy, what village is this from? Um, but now it's a... It is changing a bit more focus to the discussing the quality of the wine and perhaps the winemaking behind it. But it'll, you'll have a wow. question like, these four wines are made from the same grape variety. State the grape variety justifying why. So you've got to talk to each wine in each glass. Then what 
area, name the region they're grown in as close as possible. So if you're in Napa, you might be having to say it's Russian River. Or wow. if you're in Bordeaux, you have to say it's Pouillac versus San Estef. So you do a load of tasting. It's great fun. I mean, mm-hmm. harder things to do in your life. But the styles now have merged. You know, back in the day, even when I was doing it, I started in 98. And got it in. I, I don't know. <laughs> Sometime. Anyway, um, I got the final thing in 2002 because at the end of it, you have to do a dissertation. So you have to actually do a 10,000 word research paper. Um, and I did mine on a wild ferment in a winery that I was working in in Chile. And so I had to kind of wait a little, I had to wait for harvest to happen. I couldn't pick the grapes in the September when it was due. So I said to them, do you mind if I extend it for another year? And they're like, yeah, that's fine. Wow. So, yeah, it's it's a very well-rounded qualification. I was until this year the, in charge of the paper too, the winemaking paper, because I'm a winemaker by trade. Mm-hmm. Um, so I oversaw that for 14 years so setting all the questions and stuff. So I've seen the responses that people write, and I know why there's only a 5% power. Sorry. Genuine royalty here today, isn't it? Yeah, it's seriously. It really is. Yeah. I'm not saying that lightly. Um, we, we do appreciate not it. Not really. My husband says MW stands for my wife or <laughs> Master Wanker. Oh. That's the one I prefer to use. Yeah, he, Master Wanker. I might be an MW, windfall. actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he did say my windfall, but that yeah. never eventuated. <laughs> So That's great. It is, did you go everywhere to try these wines too, or did you, could you just buy from different venues? Like, how does I was living in London when I did it. Yeah. Um, my boss was an MW, but I was working in Europe. So if I like, so I was based in mostly in France. But if I said I'd ring my boss and say oh, I'm really just not getting Burgundy, she'd make a few phone calls, and I would drive to Burgundy for the weekend. Doors would be open. I was so lucky. That's awesome. Doors would be open. I'd taste with the French winemakers, um, talked to them. I spoke reasonable. Well, I was working in France, so I could speak French, but not very well. Yeah, and then I was working in Romania and Bulgaria and Slovenia. So all of those, they were just starting to emerge, so they could have appeared on the exam. So I was all over that style. I obviously knew Australia. So I was very lucky. We worked in Chile and South Africa. and Yeah, so I was, I was in situ. I was probably the luckiest student. I feel like before, you know we haven't even got into the podcast yet. I'm just so interested because obviously you two love your wine. You know a lot about it, extreme lot about it. With, is there any funny situations that you found yourself in, or like you know when you do just go out for a normal dinner? Maybe it's I'm sure you don't have to go to fine dining or great yeah. restaurants all the time, where people sort of talk to you about wine and you're like, no, that's <sighs> yeah, <they're... laughs> all, all the time. time. <laughs> yeah, the mansplainers. Oh yeah, especially when you're doing. You're actually behind serving them, yeah, and they're telling you oh. no, you're wrong, and you're just like, mm, I'm an bro, MW you know what? Yeah. <laughs> yep, I know what I'm talking about. But hey, usually we just smile, and oh, we had some at the Heathcote Food and Wine Festival that would tell yeah. us more about. Yeah, wine you get than... a few. Sometimes I actually enjoy shutting people down, though. It'd like be I, fun. Yeah, yeah, embarrass them a little bit. I've I've been in the scenario where. I've been like 24 or 25 or so. So like a younger chick at like a yep. wine festival and just completely ignored by the person who's pouring the wine and he chose to go to this older gentleman who looks like he had money yeah. or whatever. And um, turns out this older gentleman was just there to get pissed and he was just slinging everything back. So the guy like, oh, turns back to me. And then I just hit him with the hardest questions on the wine. I was like, what's the pH in this? Can you tell me about the residual sugar? <laughs> You've told like, me never to mention pH. Yeah, but I just wanted to embarrass him <laughs> yeah, because I, like I was that. like... You get profiled yeah. a lot, like stereotype as well, and it is kind of. But with our friends who aren't wine people, muggles, Mel, of course, muggles, like, she's muggles. a millennial, yeah. Yeah. millennial chick. Um, <laughs> you know, we go to their house and they they'll bring out a pretty horrendous wine, but we just drink it. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. you're there for the company, not necessarily for the wine. If we want to drink good wine, we'll we'll do it at home. That's good to know. I'm married to a winemaker, so and my poor children, our poor children, <laughs> a bit of yeah. wine in there. Yeah, 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 and we're constantly plying them with wine. Which is, yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's awful. <laughs> anyway. All right, let's get into um, the basics, okay? Well, the basics for me anyway. Where would you even start? Like, should we go through the different types of wine that there is? Like, is it even as basic as going like grapes? There's yep. your purple grapes and your green. I am think I'm showing you how low of a bit no. of sand of this is, but what? where should we start? Red, How, if you were explaining it to someone. Three wine styles, red, white, and rosé. Yep. Then you've got still, which is normal table wine that has no bubbles in it, sparkling. And then we have fortified, which is like your ports and your sherries and things that have got higher alcohol. Okay. 
and then within that you've got a bazillion Billion. varieties. Yeah. Can we break down those first, like the real basic ones? Because this is where like I'm coming from, such a, a low level. You've got red, white, and still. Is that what we said? Red, white, and rosé. We've got and red, they, white, and rosé. Yeah, and they are still wines. Still wines. So yep. that's obviously a red, uh, purple grape, like a red grape. Yep. yep. A white grape, a green yep. grape. And then rosé is skin off of a, or is it a mixture of both? So it's a red grape that has... But it's had very short contact with the grape. The, the pulp is actually colourless, mm -hmm. even in a red grape. So the only colours in the skin of the red grapes. So to make a rosé, you keep the juice in contact with the skins until you get the colour that you want. Wow. And then you take the skins away. But in theory as well with red wine, because the colour comes from the skin of the grape, if you were to separate the skin and the juice straight away, you can make a wine that's clear. Even a white wine. A white wine. Yeah, right. Yeah, from a red grape. So just if we stick even to red wine for the moment, then you, like uh, traditionally as a very basic knowledge, you know like Pinot is like a really light red, mm -hmm. whereas you look at your Merlot or your Cab Savs mm -hmm. and they're up at the upper echelon of like richness. Yep. Mm -hmm. If that's the right word. Yeah, yep. killing so it. So how then from a same the same grape do you get a wine that's really – like heavy and then a, a light wine. How, what's the scale of those two? Like, So they're different varieties. Mm -hmm. So Pinot is light coloured and light bodied because it has thin skins. So it doesn't have as much of all the tannin and colour in it. Yep. Whereas Cabernet Sauvignon has thick skins and has more of the tannin and the colour components. So yep. you kind of have grades. You go from a thin skin to a really thick skin, and then there's Shiraz and Merlot in between. So it's almost like the grape determines what the wine's going to be, exactly. right? Not like it's one grape that's all the same, then that changes no. the wine. Okay, so it's all about the grape. Exactly. Yep. Yep. It's yep. like we're all homo sapiens, but we're all different varieties of homo sapiens. We're all individuals. So Cabernet Sauvignon and Sauvignon Blanc are Vitis vinifera, but they're – Little human individuals mm. within that. I like that. So they have their own little personalities. Cute. What it's about like star science? <laughs> yeah, it really. I like star science. <laughs> so Pino it... was like an aquarium, <laughs> like me. What's For a Pisces? Sure. Oh, I don't. What would be a Merlot? <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> Is that good or bad? <laughs> There's a bit of a joke about Merlot in the wine world. Oh no! There was a movie um, that came out in the '90s called Sideways, and. Um, the winos going out for dinner, they're going on a date, and one guy goes, okay, just, like, get through this. Just even if they order Merlot, just be nice. Yeah. And the guy goes, if they order Merlot, I'm fucking leaving. <laughs> I'm not Merlot, drinking any fucking Merlot. <laughs> Merlot sales went down 30% oh after that movie came out. Okay. But yeah, no, so you're calling me a Merlot, basically, no. is that? No, Merlot's, <laughs> <laughs> Merlot's people, it's, not, it's misunderstood. Okay. It's misunderstood. So I actually go. like Merlot. I'm not sure if it's... Yeah, it's soft and gentle yeah. and... Done well, it's good. I'm assuming then for white wine, yep. same, uh, different, uh, it depends on the grape and how that's grown. I'm assuming what, at sea level or in the countryside or at a different level, that determines on what sort of level you're going to get with that white. Totally. So first thing is, would be to look at the grape. So say a Sauvignon Blanc, you know, it's probably going to taste a certain way, high acid, really fruity. But then within Sauvignon Blanc, we can do other stuff. So where it's planted, like you say, is going to have a really big effect on it. How we make it, do we use oak or not? All those things will change the flavour of that particular grape. Mm. So there are natural factors that influence, so the climate and the soil, and yeah, altitude and everything. And then there's the human hand. This the is hand a, of God. The hand of God. <laughs> this is the thing that I've always rattled my brain with with wine, right? And especially, you know, I think I know the answer to this now from chatting to you, is say, for example, you've got a, a brand that makes a big scale wine. Because one thing I've loved is like when a batch comes through, right, you go to a winery and you hear them talk about a harvest comes through and they say, this is our 2023 uh, Cab Sav or Merlot, whatever it is. What amazes me the most is you'll never actually be able to make that wine again, really, unless you had the exact same weather Absolutely. on the same mountain. Yeah. With, like, that's crazy. Yeah. That's that's crazy. Yeah, it's what we call vintage variation, and that's yeah. kind of what the geeks, like, we get all excited about and we talk about mm -hmm. vintage conditions. And yeah. There are styles of wine, like big company, that they can blend across regions so they can match the style Got you, because that was what I was more. wondering, because, yeah. like, a Pepper Jack, for example, that's a very a, a wine that, you know, a lot of people will drink and it's nice and cheap and it's it serves its, its job, yep. which is good. Um, but that's... No way you'd run out of that. So I was always thinking, how do they sustain that model? 
Blending. Yeah, they can blend. So they, they might take a little bit of shirads from this vineyard and a little bit of cup from this vineyard and and try to create a similar style every year. And winemakers are super clever. They yeah. can actually do this by taste. But as you say, like it's not like beer that if you look like you're running out of beer, just make it just again. Make some more. Yeah. Whereas we get one shot to get it right every year with our more premium wines. Anything over thirty dollars, I think, is probably fair to say is probably yeah. going to have vintage variation, and we got one shot. Harvest to getting it in our bottle. How long are we looking, or does it vary for the wine? Yeah, so something like a Sauvignon Blanc, you bottle it young, so it's fruity. That's the whole point of it. Yep. So you pick in say March. So when you when you'd plant the, the, years the, above, the, years below, sorry, years above, before, how long yeah, are we so planting? The, 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 the sorry, plant drunk. is a <laughs> <laughs> the vine is what we call perennial. It yep. lives forever. So they're okay. vines that are from 1830s in Barossa. Wow. Um, so you usually get your first crop at between three and five years of young vines. So you've got three years of no income. Mm-hmm. But of an established vineyard, you pick usually in February, March, um, finishes ferment in a couple of weeks. It doesn't really need any ageing in oak or anything. So you could theoretically have that on the market by June. From Jan to June. It, it, yeah. Once it's yeah. once it's mature. For, for Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah. But for yeah. something like a high-end Pinot Noir, it's going to be aged in oak for like nine to ten months. So you pick it in March. You don't probably bottle it until end of December, January, um, because you need to empty the barrels that it's sitting in for the next harvest to come up long, unless you've got a lot of money. (laughs) Um, So you kind of, yeah, you bottle it at about 10 months. So, you know, they take a red wine on average would be 12-month turnaround, 10 to 12-month turnaround. A unoaked white wine would be six months. Yep. Rosé, six months. And just to add an extra layer, sparkling wine might be like six years. Yeah, because it's aged. Yeah, a, a right. lot of sparkling wine is aged as well. Wow. So another thing that is incredible, oh, my wife's going to hate me for saying this because it is a little <laughs> bit embarrassing, but I only learned this year that champagne is only called champagne because it's from the region champagne. Yep. Whereas sparkling wine obviously is, you know, people would say that's champagne, but it's just sparkling wine because it's not from champagne. Yep. Is that a good fact? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Did you know that, Darcy? <laughs> Oh, no, you didn't. You did not know that. <laughs> did you know that? No. So no, we have to. That. We can't use place names. Yes. And we're currently talking to the EU at the moment about everything from feta to... Prosecco. Prosecco, parma, ham. There's all these things because they are places. Yeah. Um, and I was listening to a Little Proud last night and he was saying um, the Europeans just have to get over themselves and move on. <laughs> So, oh, so like, because these are so these are foods and drinks that are named after places, yep. but yep. they don't want to be called that because it's not from there. Yeah, they don't want us to use the name because we're trading on their oh, God, history Jesus and their savoir faire. Yep. The Italians are doing it. The French do it. The, I think the thing with champagne is it would take a real wine wanker or pretentious person yep. to call you on it. Yeah, like okay. I think that we can all accept. We all know what you're talking yeah, about I do when that. you say champagne. You don't yeah. call people on it, Meg. At work, I do. I only call my closest friends on it. So if like, they're having a champagne, you'd say, "Well, it's not actually from champagne. That's a sparkling wine." If it was my close friends, yeah. so I can hang shit on, I would. Yeah. But I wouldn't just anyone. It's okay. like I do it at leeway. work just because I think that um, we should be proud of our sparkling wine and we should not be connecting mm. ourselves to the French. You know, I don't like comparing us to the French. No, mm. that's true. That's right. Yeah, so that's that's actually very smart because Australian does have good yeah. Australia. Australia does, and have it's good made in exactly wine. the same method. Yeah, just from different regions, but just different region. Yeah, yeah. yeah. very cool. Um, all right, let's get into some. Do we should we do the tasting or should we just get into some terms to explain first? I think that we can talk about the terms while we taste. I think okay. yeah, that's a great call. So the first wine we've got is a white Sauvignon Blanc. I bought this because it's aromatic, so you should be able to smell something. I, I call them savvy bees. Savvy bees. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that appropriate? No, oh, that's good. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> it's completely appropriate. There is a terrible term for it. Oh, no, is that Pinot Grigio? What I call it? The bitch diesel. I, the bitch I, diesel. I call it rosé bitch diesel. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, wasn't it Sauvignon Blanc? Wasn't that the original VD? I'm not sure. Might be. <laughs> okay, so what have we got? We've got some bitch diesel there. Adelaide Hills Sauvignon Blanc, 2023. Yep. Nepenthe. 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 
Get in there, boys. Here we go. So, oh, yeah, I forgot to pull for you. Sorry. Um, but Darcy and Zach wants to hang around for a podcast. He's never been in here ever. He never comes in and supports, but today he's keen. Funny that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, first thing we do. First thing we do is we look at the colour. So we normally hold it on the side, and, you know, this is pretty almost water white. It's it, Usually you do it against a white background, but it's... You, you know, there's not much colour in there at all. And that just gives you an indication of what the grape variety could be. Mm -hmm. It's usually a bit darker if it's been aged in oak. So, it could, But as I always say to students, move on from yeah. colour. Yeah. Then move put on. your nose on the edge of the glass like this. Can you smell it? I can. It's very yep. fruity. Then start moving it away. Can you still smell it? Give it a bit of a swirl. So I can smell it about yeah. here. And that gives you an idea of the... Intensity. Intensity. I'm looking at me. <laughs> Intensity of the aromas. And I think it's worth pointing out that we swirl because it unleashes the aromas. If you were to smell it before you if you were to smell it before you swirled it, you would barely be able to smell anything. In some wines, Savion Blanc. So that's can why smell we stir it. We all swirl wines. it. Swirl. swirl. Just swirl, so we can stir. smell it better. You're getting oxygen into the wine yeah. to release the aromatic compounds. This, and it makes you look fancy. It looks really cool. So this is well. Yep. When you're um smelling, um how you know could you smell from how how smelly can a wine be like? Yeah, I mean New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, you yeah. could have it Real, in the next like, room yeah, and you'd be like, going, oh, I can still smell it. Yeah. You always hang shit on Kiwi <laughs> yeah. savvy. I'm married yeah. to a Kiwi, so I'm allowed to. Um, I do like New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, but it is yeah. very pungent and okay. aromatic. Yeah. So yeah, it's sort of. Finger nose, finger distance from your nose. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what we would call really pronounced, I guess. Yep. Very, very fruity. Yeah, and then we try and describe what it smells like. And one of the questions that we get often is, do you, if I say, oh, it smells like pear, people think we add that flavouring. But it's just the chemical compound yep. that's in pear is in grapes because grapes are fruits yes. as well. Okay. So that's why. The only thing, the only fruit in your wine is a grape. Yes. Yes. So maybe us three yeah, should what can have it. Yeah, we, we should have a little. <laughs> I know that I'm not, I'm not making a joke here, but when I um no, because when I was a kid, I used to my nan and pa would babysit me, and I used to sit down with them at lunch, and they'd be drinking like white wine out of a goon bag. Yeah. And they'd always give me like a tiny back. This might explain a few things, but they'd give me like a few <laughs> like a little wine, and I'd drink it with them. So that's just bringing that's back so the memories. Cute. That is yeah. Nice. I mean, in Europe, they give kids wine at lunch, but they water it down. Yeah, it was like a tiny little yeah. goon. So they just put, <laughs> we all start on goon. Yeah. Fruity Lexia was my Although, wine of choice. Meg's never played Goon of Fortune. We no. discovered really? recently. You've got I to think do I might that. have to change that. You should that. do that with like a really expensive goon bag. <laughs> Very expensive Maybe we should do that. That's a business idea we should, <laughs> should talk about. Put some gray in Who's got green. a heels hoist these days? Don't you I need a heels do. hoist? I've got one. Yeah, I've got one too, yeah. but the cheap the okay. cheap version, <laughs> not the old metal one. Okay, so what can we smell? Does it smell a bit like cut grass? Like you've just mown the lawn? No? no. Lemons? Do you get grapefruit, passion I get fruit? citrusy. Yeah. Like yeah. I get citrus. citrus. Yep. You know what's really hard is actually articulating it. That's, That's like what the I'm hardest saying. part. Yeah. That's yeah. the... The difference between you and us yeah. is that we have a little library of words, words yeah. sitting there and so we can pull them out and we just don't. This is what I was saying earlier. Yeah. If you asked me to describe a painting to someone, I wouldn't have the yeah. words. Yeah. Um, but, you know, someone who's an artist or whatever would have those words, but I clearly know how to describe yeah. wine. Okay. So maybe you give us what 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 do you smell? Well, with? I get yeah lemon lemon pith. I get a bit of cut grass, uh, white flowers like honeysuckle and mm. grapefruit. I get grapefruit. grapefruit. I get I grapefruit. grapefruit. Yep. Okay. Yeah, there's something pink in there. It's grapefruit. It's, yes, it's, it's like, like blood a, orange or something. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, Mel s smells in colours. I do. <laughs> you smell in colours. Yeah, I see colours and shapes when I smell and yeah. taste. So then you want to taste the wine. Okay. okay, so you take it into your mouth. And you're looking for three basic things apart from flavour. So taste is salty, sour, bitter, umami and sweet. That's your taste buds. You remember at school you put the vinegar over there and salty, the salt over there? Sour. Salty, sour. Sugar. Sugar. Bitter. A bitter. And then there's one called 
umami, U-M-A-M-I. Umami. It's, imagine eating parmesan cheese, that savoury, mouth-filling flavour, yeah. or olive tapenade. Yeah, yeah. mushroom. I yeah, love mushroom. A, a good sort of cheese and wine yeah. guy. But yeah, I'm not a steak and wine guy. We'll talk about that mm. later. So maybe I need some help. You All should right. come to work today. I did I a think... cheese and wine tasting. I mm. feel a little bit full still. Mm. Um, so that's taste. So that's okay. on your, t- your tongue. That's your yeah. taste buds. Yeah. But outside of that, there's flavour. So okay. the grapefruit and the lemon and the passion fruit and the grass. And that comes from basically most of it, 70% of it comes from your going up your nose. So take the wine into your mouth, yep. hold your nose so that it's closed and you won't be able to see any flavour. Yes, because it's like Go when you have a cold f- exactly. and you can't taste. So don't, don't breathe in when I'm no, drinking. Just put, take it into your mouth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How much? Sorry. Let's do it. Just like how much wine? Oh, just a mouthful. Oops. It's fine. Yeah. Don't, don't like a sip. get heaps yeah, of it, but just a it. sip. Yeah. So hold it and then let go and you'll see the flavour comes flooding back. Because 70% of what you taste is actually up the retronasal passage. I accidentally <laughs> swallowed mine. Yep, that's okay. You can swallow it or spit it out. Um, wow. And so that's the flavour. That's the grapefruit and the lemon and the blah, 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 blah. So that's why when we do it, I do this thing that people hate. We have a guy who on our podcast, we think, from Germany. His name is Bon, and he complains about the slurping. Okay. He thinks they're hideous. <laughs> so I'm going to do it for you. So he listens or he's on? He listens. Okay, and he messages in about it. Yep. Yeah. So you, the reason I'm sucking the air through yeah. is to release those flavour compounds up the back of my nose. So I do this. I really oh. hope that you weren't coming into this thinking you were going to come out fancy. What was that? <laughs> it's not very sexy, <laughs> okay. I know. It's not so very you're... sexy. If we went out for dinner, I would not yeah. be doing that. Yeah. So keep your mouth closed, obviously, so the wine doesn't And you're go. pushing it to the back of your... You're just sucking air through it. Okay. Yeah. Getting air into your mouth, around the wine, and it, essentially that air is going to go through your nasal passage and make you taste so much more than you would have mm. otherwise. Yep. Holy shit. You can taste... You know what? A lot more tannin when you do that. Is that right? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to tell him? <laughs> there is no tannin in white wine. Okay. I tell you what you're tasting. Yeah. It's acid. Acid. So, that's the one. So take it in, swallow it, close your mouth, put your head forward and see how much saliva you accumulate. That's called the dribble test. I think I was getting, because it was like, yeah. it was strong. It feels, yeah. Yeah, it dries okay. your mouth. So yeah. see how much saliva once you've swallowed the wine? Okay. Oh. That's the dribble test. The more dribble you have, the more acid there is in the wine. Mm-hmm. Mm. Tannin does the opposite. There isn't tannin in red when white wine. Yeah, just if you're wondering, Darcy. Tannin <laughs> dries out your mouth. So the tannin cross-links the protein in your saliva, ah. making it unavailable for lubrication, so it dries out your mouth. So tannin dries? Yep. yep. Acid, acid Mate, that's saliva. why you have Waters. something like this before yep. a meal because it gets your gastric juices going. And I was joking, by the way. That was for content. Yeah, but Just no. a good snippet. It's a good <laughs> yeah, snippet. Yeah. Um, that's really interesting. Okay. Yes. So we did I'm the acid test. Yep. You've determined that there's a lot of acid here, right? There's a lot of acid. You're getting like yep. really watery mouth, so we know it's a higher acid wine. There's a good term. You've got your acid now. Yeah, that's yeah, good. Yeah, so you're looking for acid, tannin in reds, and body. Um, so bodies, we like to say, imagine you've got skinny milk versus 2% fat milk versus full fat milk versus cream and double cream. How heavy that feels on your palate. Yep. And that's how we sort of assess body. Obviously, it takes time to uh, calibrate, yep. but that's kind of the basic way that we do it. Mm. Or we, the basic way we teach people. I don't particularly sit there going, oh, that's Rev. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's Rev. Is it Rev a skinny milk? No, it's Rev's skinny, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rev's yeah. middle, I think. I'm not. So, is it like nearly a thinness and a thickness exactly, to it as well? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. almost like, it, like in the light-bodied wine, it's almost like someone's added a dash of water yeah. to it. It feels a little bit dilute and watery, and then mm. you've got a big full-body cabernet, which your mouth just feels full of the, of the wine. Mm. So, they're the sort of basic components. Yeah, I think maybe the last thing that's worth mentioning is the finish. Yep. So, take it into your mouth, have a sip, enjoy. After you've swallowed, start counting in your head, how long am I still tasting the yummy flavours? Okay. So if you only get a few seconds in and the flavour cuts out, it's not very long. If you get to about five seconds, it's okay. It's about medium. If you get 10 seconds or even more and you're still tasting that awesome flavour, 
you know it's a really long line and that's an indicator of quality a often. good one yeah. with that as well um sometimes when you're drinking when i'm drinking wine you can feel that obviously it's white now that i know this but like that acidic feeling for a long time too would that be a cheaper wine if you're feeling that for a long period or is that just maybe like the flavor of it it can depend on the great variety yeah, but okay. also if it feels out of balance like it feels a bit raw then yes it can be an indicator of quality because it's not the wine's not balanced the acid sort of what we call elbow it's sort of sticking out a little bit you don't want anything you want everything to just be seamless Mm -hmm. but sometimes you've had those wines where they're really hot alcohol um all the tannins are really drying and you can't because your mouth's so dry that's an unbalanced wine and that again is a part of the quality kind of question but yeah. really at the end of the day we just say doesn't matter do you like it or not yeah is it delicious yeah what you do you know? think do you like it you know what when you like when i smelt it i didn't think i was gonna like it because it was like i'm a traditionally like not a very fruity yeah. liker mm. i like dry like i like that more of a yeah a dry taste to everything like whenever i go and Ask for like I've got a wine, so just like the driest white you have. So I like I really like Chardonnay, like a buttery dry Chardonnay. Yep. Yeah, nice. No, I'm with you there. Delicious. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I'm, does. I was hoping it did, but um, yeah, that's my sort <laughs> of style. I disagree with you on the style, but that's fine. You yeah, yeah okay, good. that makes sense in what I'm asking <laughs> and for. Like I said, it depends on what you like. Yeah. And if you think it's delicious. That's yeah, but all then that again, like I've had, like I go to a really great wine bar, um, where I, you know, around my area, it's called Vinoshi's. Have you ever heard of Vinoshi's? I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take you guys there. It's mm-hmm. in East Ivano. Really, so they're winemakers as well, and they've got just wine. It's like it's like a two rack cellars mm. sort of. Oh, but nice. Yeah, where I am, um, you should definitely go. And yeah, they come out and sort of explain it, and I'm like, no, I don't like fruity wines. They're like, no, try this, and I'm like, no, that's like, that's really good. Like, so I don't think I obviously know what I'm talking about, which is um, which is evident today. Well, uh, yeah, I think we have preconceptions, and then we kind of dismiss a lot of stuff. Yeah, and that's what the beauty about having a good person in a wine bar that can actually say to you, "No, mate, yeah. just give it a try." Mm. And I guarantee you're going to like it. Because even something that's sort of uh, again jumping around a little bit, but it confused me a bit with wine is you know we'd be to that scale earlier around like Pinot in the red category versus like the the Merlot at the other end. And I'm not sure like, what that scale is, but you always go, I want something light, I'm going to go a Pinot. But you actually can get a lighter Merlot and a yep. heavier Pinot. Yep. Like that's not the way that it actually works, hey? Yeah, to an extent it's the way it works. Yep. So Pinot is by nature a lighter grape. Yep. But you're so right that within Pinot this you can get really heavy ones, you can get lighter ones. But yeah, Cabernet that is seen as a really heavy grape, if you got it from, like it comes down to where it's grown as well. Yeah. So if you get one from South Australia and like a really hot place, it's going to be really rich and big and powerful. But say you got one from the Arrow Valley, it's going to be a lot lighter. It's going to have a lot more yeah. elegance and finesse. Love that. Yeah. Yeah. So you start with the grape, but then within the grape, you have all these scales as well. Mm. God, it's just never ending. That's the never great thing ending. about it. Yeah. It's like golf. <laughs> <laughs> sort of. Sort of. I think cricket's like never ending. Isn't oh, it? cricket oh sucks. No, god. we don't do cricket. Oh, oh my god. Yeah. yeah, golf, no, I'm not very good at it. So it is never ending for me because I can never find my balls. Yeah, so well, like, oh. that's the way it is. So once we've done that, it's the, the three things. So um, smelling. Smelling. Swirling. Yep. Smelling again. Yep. In the mouth. Tasting. Yeah. Tasting. Mm-hmm. Um, Block the nose, not physically, but you can if you want to. Not every time. Not every time. Just an example. Just an example. Just to show you oh, that's just to show you what it is. Yeah. Yeah. That retronasal passage is, and that's like you said, when you've got a cold, you really just want bland food because mm. you can't taste anything, mm. Mm. and it's just it's sort of the difference between taste and flavour. Love it, and then just enjoy. Enjoy. Yeah. Yep. And then if you want to get into sort of food and wine matching, you start thinking, okay, well, this has got high acid, so it could handle really fatty foods. So I always suggest pork because I think pork goes with everything. Um, but fish and chips, imagine this with fish and chips. Yeah. The acid had cut through. It's almost like this is your vinegar or your lemon juice yeah. on your your fish and chips. Yeah, that's really – because that's what I, what I was saying before about like my wife, she loves like a steak with a red wine. But I'm like, it doesn't quench my th- thirst – a wine, like it makes it nearly like slower for me to eat it. I yeah. don't really enjoy with eating it with steak, if that makes sense. I mean, it's pairing something really powerful with something yeah. really powerful. I understand. It makes sense. Well, you're a super taster. I am yeah. a super taster, so it's different. Actually, mm. I sh- we should have bought strips along. You might be too. Do you tend to, with your red wines, yep. do you tend to enjoy really rich, heavy ones or do you like a lighter style? No, actually, I 
so again, this might be make sense or not, but I drink in when it's hot, I'll drink white, and if it's cold, I'll drink red. So if I'm drinking the red, like it's normally a winter thing for me, and as soon as it goes away, I can't drink red in summer. Like I just feel like Same. it's it's yeah. not a drink that like yep. I really go with. Yep. So as soon as it gets uh, yeah, the sun's out, it's like a rosé or a white. But one um, wine that I really love as well, not to confuse everyone, but I love orange wine. Like that organic orange wine is like my favourite. A bit of a not, hipster. Not, not yeah. orange the region, orange type wines. The t- orange yeah. type wine. So yeah. I, I think it's content. organic. Skinsies. Skin, oh, yeah. They're not always organic. Not always. It's or? low intervention. Yeah. So they've got less chemicals added. So I them. love those orange wines. Like they're probably my favourite. Wow, you should go out for a drink together because I'm not coming. Really? You don't like the orange? <laughs> I mean, I don't like them either. They're okay. No, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 I disagree a lot. Yeah. Oh, mine's. They're just really white though, right? Just, like, yeah. just a master of wine. We don't have to agree Yeah, with There are some good ones, but there are a lot that trade on the coolness factor yeah. that are just faulty and shite and that pisses me off. Yeah. They should be delicious. Yeah. But if and you're... they're not all delicious. Well, I can, no. I, can, I can totally agree because what happens with the orange, and I'm a massive victim of this, like I am... 30 like i'm a younger guy that like i am so superficial in a sense that I, if it's a cool label like i'm going to go for it without actually knowing the body of it she knows that that's all marketing is that my, <laughs> they well, I, your, I think so but i'm the one making you pick up unfortunately yeah. it is to do with that but like you can have the best wine in the world not, but if it doesn't have yeah, a label, label sells like, the first wine I need you to, first bottle need you wine to, sells yeah. the second it's not superficial because there is so much to know about it's wine yeah. it's yeah. hard to understand that's all you've got is mm. the bottle. Unless you literally go do an entire course or listen to a whole podcast, how else are you meant to know? Well, yeah, they don't, then they're, based on... they're not like a, you know, when you buy like a, a juice or a Coke and it says what's actually in it really as well. So like you sort of... Oh, that's coming. Really? It's coming well, in Europe for the end yeah. of this year. Wow. So okay. ingredient labelling. Not that it helps though. Like yeah. we, we're telling Grape you what's juice. in yeah. it. Pinot Noir is the same as there is orange juice, and orange juice, orange mm. mixed with banana and pineapple might be the same as Cab mixed with Shiraz, Cab Sav Merlot. Yeah, wow. So we're telling you what's in it. It's just that not many people understand. No, exactly. How all those things taste. Um, just to so if we move on from white, we go to the next. Yeah. Just on that as well with the the pairing. So you'd say. Is any, like, normally the one thing that I've sort of heard with, with white or the, the base is like that with fish is the best to go with? Like, <sighs> look, it just th- depends. They say like with like. So the, the body or the flavour impact of, say, your dish should match your wine. Mm-hmm. But, frankly, I don't think there are, those rules really apply anymore because our cuisine is so varied. You know, mm. back in the day it was fish with butter sauce or steak and pepper sauce or steak Diane and we've moved way on way from from that so we say things like Korean fried chicken with Sauvignon or something really high yeah, with right. acid or you know dan dan noodles it's and there's so much other flavor in food so yeah, I mean, if you think it tastes good, just drink it. Yeah, I, I like that. I think with food pairing, it's a lot easier to talk about what not to do than what to do. Yeah, okay. So yeah. the main thing is if you have sweet food, you need a sweet wine. Okay. You can't drink something like this with no. sweet food. It will taste disgusting. Well, we don't forget, we're also talking about from the perspective of making the wine look good. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's we what we We don't give a crap about, about the food. food. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we did a cheese tasting today and we were looking at which cheese made which wine look the best. better? Yeah, yeah. That's so really sweet cool. food makes wine taste less sweet, less fruity, and more acidic. So this wine that already has that much acid, if you were to have a bite of donut and then taste that, it would just taste like yeah. biting into a lemon. Can't say I've ever had a wine and donut. Don't do donuts. Yeah, <laughs> mixed together. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm, I'm going to finish this because it's quite okay. Good. So now we're going to rosé. So the reason I brought this is just to show you how we make sort of pink wine from red grapes. What was it, what was it called again? Rosé. What was the other name? <laughs> That's it. I thought you were calling it something else earlier. Oh, Bitch Juice. Bitch, bitch Diesel. Bitch Diesel. Oh, that's not me. That's her. <laughs> that's me. Um, so apparently that's you want- the best name I've ever heard. It's <laughs> <laughs> unbelievable. Have you not heard it? Oh, my God. Sauvignon Blanc was the original, I think. <laughs> it is funny, though, because, you know, oh, I'm not going to say it. You do that. It's like funny when, you know, back in the day when Juz was my wife, she was partying and she'd come home and you just, like, smell the- White wine. So the savvy yeah. bee on her. Yeah. Yeah, all the mummies, that's all they ever drink. Thank and you. they um they so. you know, they'll say to me, Come round for a champagne 
and then they'll give me sparkling Sauvignon Blanc. A, it's not champagne from it's not from the Champagne region, and B, it's not even the same grape variety, and it's bloody awful. And I'm I always take my own now. Yeah, <laughs> yep. <laughs> You'd be such an intimidating dinner guest. Not that you would. But yeah, I don't. Hard, to, I try not to, to embarrass people. Like we have friends, and they always serve this pinot that we really hate, and we've never told them. We just, you know, go. This is a big podcast, nice. you know. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> I, I haven't mentioned their names. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. Um, um, all right, so red. Uh, sorry, rosé. Uh, so this is made from Pinot Noir. They're telling us on the label it's for Pinot, so it's made from Pinot Noir. Yeah. So with rosé, the colours that you can get are everything from Barbie pink down to this sort of salmon-y, orange-y colour. Mm. Listen, Mel's got the rosé shirt on, really. Yes. Oh, yeah, did that on purpose. So, because it, it is... so different. Yeah, you're mm-hmm. looking for red fruit because it's from red grapes. So strawberries and cream lollies is often a descriptor for rosé. Yeah. Literally. Yep. Raspberry lollies. It's more of that confected spectrum oh, so of fruit. so annoying because I'm just about to, like, pick it and then you say it and yeah. then I'm like... Raspberry lollies and strawberries and cream, I can yeah. fully get. And that like lolly banana as well, there's a little bit in there. Mm. Oh, you're really susceptible to that. Though. I am. Um... So with rosé, we we are quite disparaging of rosé. We just think it's a drink you just have. You know, um, we don't necessarily take it that seriously. We don't analyse it as much. Yeah. It is a really valid type of wine in the market, but it's and it's huge. But people just tend to sit down on a summer's day and drink yeah. it. They don't really think about it. Yeah, that's how it should be. Yeah. Just didn't. I like ice with it too. Is that okay? I was just going to say there are even some people that add ice to it. I mean, no, I said people add ice to it. No. no. <laughs> Mel's mum Mel's mom does add ice and I will say. Oh, she used to add ice we, to Sauvignon Blanc. We were in, in France this year and I don't refuse mm-hmm. to spend more than a couple of euros on rosé. There's absolutely no point. Yeah. And I do add ice to it because it's like a cocktail-y thing for me. It's it's yeah. not really a wine. It's like a fruit punch almost. <laughs> yeah. It's I'm, like spend, a, I'm only spending really two euros. Wine. I will yeah. not spend, you know, my sister's like, oh, you can't buy that. She's a doctor, a neurologist, mm. so she can afford to spend more than two euros. But it's rosé. Why would you spend more than two euros? Good to know. Yeah. yeah. I can really get the smells of this one. Hmm. And if you see rosé for like $80 or something, I just think it's almost never worth it. It's fun, cheap, cheerful, drink it in the sun. Just Love enjoy it. it. Don't think too much. Hey, guess what? Bit full of body on that. Yep. <laughs> Nailed it. Now, rosé doesn't have tannins either because... No. You should have asked me that. You've one. taken the skins away yeah. early, so it's almost a white wine just with a blush yeah. colour. To that feels... But it, so, it feels heavier it and feels rounder. Thicker. Mm-hmm. It almost feels like, you know, glycerol, antifreeze. No? No, I've never eaten it's like So It's almost like someone's added a little drop of oil in this. So yeah, It's more yeah. of that oily texture. Because when it rolls off, it's yeah, like exactly. connected. Yeah. You know? And the acid isn't as high in this. So you can do your dribble test. Yeah. Keep your lips closed. I'm still getting some acid, but not as much. Yep, yeah. exactly. Cool. See? <laughs> that and that's, good. that's the beauty about the dribble test yeah. is it takes away your mind and it's just a physiological reaction. So it's yeah. just your body's... Doing something, so all your other perceptions of, oh, well, I like acid or whatever. I don't think this is very acidic. It just tells you, yep, this has got mm. acid. And it's got that strawberries and cream flavour again, no tannin. Nice, easy drinking kind of style of wine. Mm. Where is this one from? This is from Sapling Out. It's from Canberra. It is. Canberra. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, so Canberra flies under the radar a bit as a wine region, but they do some awesome they do stuff. Make some it's great it's wines. really worthwhile exploring. But uh, Canberra is? Canberra. Yeah. So that was actually what I was going to ask later. I'd love to jump into this while we're actually on the topic. Like SA Vic, New South Wales, TAS, WA, all the you know places yep. in Australia. How would you – is it easy enough to rate a 3 2 one? <gasps> Nah. <laughs> From a state level? Yeah. I would Do say you mean in quality? Yeah, just consistency of like quality South over – South Australia would have to be number one. Yeah? Because they have much bigger volume – than anywhere else in Australia. They're huge. Um, I think they're three times the size of Victoria. So uh, in terms of how, how much yeah. they produce. Um, Victoria, I would rate for diversity because it's a little patchwork. 
you know, Grampians is a little bit different to Yarra Valley, to Mornington. Each has got their own little thing. Barossa is a little bit more homogenous, like Shiraz mm. is great in Barossa and also Clare and also McLaren Vale. People in the South Australia are going to kill me for saying that. WA, I guess, for quality, but it's exp- it's getting expensive. Yeah. It's seen really well internationally. Everyone yeah. talks about Margaret well, River. Well, Margaret River. And yeah. There are other regions. And then New South Wales, I mean, really, there's the Hunter. Yeah. And no, I mean, there are other there are other regions, but they're not as well known and visited because you know Orange is great, the town, the region, but it's miles. You know, it's four, nearly four hours from Sydney, yeah. so people just don't go. Like Rutherglen from here, you know, yeah, and it's four hours away. Yeah. <clears throat> I think the other thing is it's like not as Meg kind of spoke to. Not every region makes everything, so it comes less down to which region is like objectively what they the best. In. Mm. Yeah, it's yeah. like what do you like? If you like to drink Shiraz, then you should be drinking maybe Brossa. If you like to drink Pinot Noir, look in Victoria or Tasmania. So it comes down to the kind of styles that you like and just learning where they grow best. That's really yeah. interesting. Okay, while we're on this as well. And we're put- on holiday. Exactly. <laughs> I don't put you under pressure on this one either, but if you could give your top three winery experiences. So, like, if you were going to say, like, your top three wineries in Australia. Oh, oh in Australia. Okay. In Australia. Not in the world, obviously. Um, we can do that on the next episode. I was going to say, I was just going to sound like such a wanker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in Australia, what would you say? Like, in terms of going there, the wine, like, the, the cellar oh. door. Montalto in Mornington for me. It's just the wines are really good. It's beautiful. The staff are really slick. Um welcoming but they know their stuff and I, it's just for me it really in terms of the experience is the jewel in the crown of mornington although mm. you know 10 minutes by tract is fantastic and there is. are a heap that are yeah, really yeah, really yeah. good but Montalto, i just that's where i tell people to, to go. go yeah because you can have lunch and then you can have a great tasting and the views are fantastic yeah love it um i mean, I mean i'd have to say to bilk Oh my god! I love to got married there. Where's that I one? Did. It's in the Gambia. Yeah. So it's a great road trip. It's an hour and a half away. Really, really old. Like they have vines that you can see that date back to the 1960s. Wow! It's like going back in time. 1927. 1920. Oh yeah, they do too. 1860s. They have some 1860s, and they age their wine. So you can taste so many wines that are like 10, 15 years old. Yeah, the cellar door's just quite incredible. rustic and. It feels like oh. going back to another time. And That's they just awesome. do stuff really well. Yeah. And I think... Tilbik. To Bilk. To Bilk. T-A-H-B-I-L-K. Yep. Is that right? Okay. That There's two. One more you've got to agree on. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I just said Rather Glen. <laughs> just Rather because Glenn? I think Why? they are sitting on our... Um, our history of winemaking in Australia. Rather so Glen. I've never yeah, been to Rather Glen. They make really... Daggy styles, fortified wines, two percent of the, you know, of the market. So they nothing, but they continue to do it. They are the custodians of our of our yeah. winemaking winemaking history um, in Victoria, and they've been doing it, you know, for hundreds of years. And they still, there are a lot of family owned businesses. They still do it. They're making varieties that people just do not care for. Um, and I just take my hat off to them. I just think, well, good, good, good on you for keep going. Awesome. Keep on going, but we'll have to do a trip down there. Yeah, there used to be the Rutherglen Rattler, so there used to be this train that you could get on. It was just middle-aged people getting absolutely stonkered before they arrived, I could do and that. then they get on a bus <laughs> and they get taken around. I don't think they do it anymore. Oh god! What would your one be? Tassie? I was actually going to say, oh, oh Tassie's pretty amazing. But to your point, Sepplesfield in oh. South Australia, you can taste hundred-year-old. Wow. Fortified like a port style. Yeah stuff there and that is incredible i mean i'd have to, margaret river voyager estate i love i love hunter valley because once again they age i love aged wines yeah. that's ugly as hell what is hunter valley really i thought, it was, I thought it was beautiful in hunter valley i used to live in sydney it's not ugly it's beautiful i just find it really just not a, a pretty landscape yeah. Yeah, you're so mean. maybe you're <laughs> swallowing a lot of the wines. That you, did you, yeah, yeah, I just like Cessnock. But and... they're oh my god, they're semi on, and yeah, everywhere right. you go, they will give you a taste of the wine. wine. Really, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it does. does. <laughs> it really does. Yeah. Oh, I hope I haven't put you out with uh with with anyone there. Um. Okay. So that's the rosé. So basically, with rosé, again, I just learnt then 
t- um, smell, s- uh, swirl, get in. That was a little bit heavier yep. blend because it was a bit thicker. It tastes a mm-hmm. bit more like not oily in a taste but just in texture. Yep. Um, but we don't respect it as much as well, the other two. What did you think of the finish? If you have a sip, <clears throat> yeah, we I'm don't. Yeah, I've done finish yet. <laughs> Does Some it? people do. <laughs> There's no finish, exactly. Yeah. So some of the best wines in the world, you can just taste it. Yeah. For 10, 20 seconds. Just goes. These it's, wines that yeah, are made to four. just be easily enjoyed, knock it back, whatever, they tend to have a really short finish. And yep. they're often made as a byproduct to red wine. So what happens is they pick the red wine and they want to concentrate the juice to skin, so they want less juice in contact with the skins to get more colour. Okay. So they'll drain off some of the juice. And that will go to be made as rosé. Yeah. Okay. So it's like a it's like a yeah. And I would suspect that this is how this has been made because it's quite ripe in alcohol. It's like around yeah. that thirteen and a half percent, which is where you'd be picking Pinot Noir. Um, and so I think that that's kind of what they've done, which is a valid way of making it for sure. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, it's a good drink. It's great. Um, okay. Okay. Lastly, so Mel told Tara, me I had Wara. to buy something that was exciting. <laughs> Yeah, because so, she didn't. She You're wasn't. welcome. Meg told me this morning what she was planning on bringing, and I was this like, "You go something really expensive, Bross and Shiraz." True, that is nice. But I was like, "Get something that we'll actually get really excited about." Okay, I'm excited. And this is something that okay. excites us. So this is Yarra Valley Pinot Tarawara. Yep. Tarawara's. Um, just taking podcast. Photos mid pod. Sorry. Yep, <laughs> you can pause. Oh, yeah, my gosh. It does yeah, have an art sense. gallery <laughs> attached to it. But yep. this is a 2016, so this should have a little bit of age character on it. Oh. So I want to take you, hopefully, I don't know if it does. Yeah, so what happens the more volume you have, the, it changes your perception of the colour. Yep. So this has definitely got a distinct sort of orangey edge yeah. to it, though. And this is a, this is a, cabs up, did you say? No. Pino. Pick up Pino. 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 So the and the reason it has that is because it is getting a little bit older as yep. wines age. They the color changes from that sort of red purpley color more to a garnet, more yep. browning edging. Straight away, like you look at this when you're thinking of a red, it looks very light. Yeah. Like so, you could if you held this over text, you could actually read through this. Yeah. Pinot should have cherry. Raspberry, <clears throat> cranberry, sometimes blueberry, but as it gets older, it gets um, we call them the tertiary flavors, which is like mushroom and forest mm. floor. Some people say baby's nappy, just beautiful and not even necessarily a bad thing. No. I know that smell. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you don't forget it. Uh, do you notice that with this wine, it's a lot harder to pinpoint what, what, that you're, flavor is, what yeah. you're smelling because it's just got so much more complexity built into it because of that age. Yeah, exactly. And the more you have to kind of go back and look and swirl and think and then describe, the more complex it is that it, there is to the wine. I have been spitting. <laughs> yeah. um, but... It also talks to the quality of the wine. So the more complex it is, the more... Um, the higher the quality usually. It's almost like a bit of like medicine-y. Yeah. And that's often like... Which medicine? Like, like the cherry, cherry medicine? Yeah, cherry yeah. medicine, yeah. A cranberry, so that, like a tart cranberry. Yeah. So that's from the oak. I was going to say, so is it woody? Yeah, because yeah. clove, it sort of smells like. Um, there's a bit of vanilla in there. Yeah, I, can do, I can get the vanilla. Yep. So that's from oak. And that's the barrel, obviously. Yep. So, yeah, so it's oak barrel. Yep. So it's aged in oak barrel for about yep. ten months, yep. and then it, the flavours in the oak, the oak, are sucked out by the alcohol into the wine. How long does a barrel last? Gives its flavour for about three years. And then you have to get new ones because otherwise you'd just be too no, soaked well, with the wine. No, you keep or? them because they allow oxygen through. So they have two roles. They have the role of um, oh. adding flavour for about three years, and then after that they have a micro-oxygenation sort of role. So it can soften your tannins and bring your wine on. And also you've invested them. They're two grand each, yeah. so you're not going to throw them out. As far as the tax man's concerned, they're dead after three years. Yeah. So they're free storage vessels basically. Okay, okay great. <laughs> but they're a lot of work. You know, they're, they're, there's a lot of maintenance in looking after your oak. Yeah, it's very cherry uh, 
Yeah, it is a bit like cherry Cheerio. medicine, actually, but in a good way. Yeah, yeah like not in a. Oh, I like cherry medicine. And when we say complexity, we literally just mean how many things can you rattle off about it. So this first one, we said maybe four or five things. The rose, we only had a couple of flavors, but this one, we could just keep going all day. We've already said like 10 different flavors. And so that means this is quite a complex wine. Yeah. No, uh, no saliva here, girls. No, oh, that's your tannin. Your tannin. <laughs> and tannins in Pinot are different to tannins mm. in Cabernet. Mm. So Pinot tannins are more soft, silky. These are almost like dusty. Imagine if you're driving behind it's someone dusty. on a dusty road and mm. you've got your window open and your mouth open. That sort of has that dusty chalkiness. Yeah, tannin. You're all too young to know the old chalk dust from your no, school I teachers. No, I remember the chalk dust. Yeah. <laughs> Tannin is like if you were to make a cup of tea and put like five tea bags in it. Imagine how that would taste on your tongue. But this is like one tea bag. This is like one tea. This yeah, but like a big cab sav is like five tea bags, and yeah. this is like one nice tea is bag. Is the tannin the alcohol? It is. No, nope. Alcohol is no. different. No. Wrong, Darcy. Yeah. No, it comes from the skins. From the skins. The alcohol yeah. comes from the skins. No, sorry, tannin comes from the skins. Tannin comes from the skins. So yeah. even if you think about Oh, yeah, because that's why with white, the skin's off. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you're learning. The alcohol comes from the sugar in the grapes. So if sugar you have grapes, grapes mm. they're sweet. Um, and so the yeast for f- in fermentation converts the sugar in the grapes to alcohol. Mm. And that's how we get it. And how is – I know this is a very – It'd be different for everything, but like when you get the grapes, obviously, you know, back in the day, they'd stamp on them in mm-hmm. the barrels. Like now, how does that process work? Like what would happen to actually go from vine to bottle? So they're harvested, they're picked yep. either by hand or by machine. Sorry, I'm just going to ask one more question on top of that because I actually learned recently that so many bottles, so many grapes don't actually make it as well. Like there's a lot of off. Isn't there like a level for wineries around like how many percent they actually harvest versus what they use or something like that? Or what? The French would like you to believe that. Okay. Um, the the Europeans limit yield. Yeah. We don't. But if we're making quality, we pick everything. You've okay. spent all year, you're spending 15 grand just to grow the grapes. Yeah. You want to get everything off that vineyard that you possibly can. Because my mate, uh, Nick, who he has a place in Jamison. So there's a winery there called Mount Terrible. I don't know if you've heard of it before, but he was saying it's something like it's the lowest, like they only pick their best because they want to keep their standard up. Yep. If that makes, yeah. So that's a choice for the yep. winemaker. So sometimes when the grapes come into the winery, we'll, we'll go, no, that those go over there. They can make a different bottle of wine and, and this will be the good bottle of wine. That's not as good, yeah. so that's going to so go for a cheaper. So this is our good one, then we have a, our cheap yep. winery. That and we so your guys one. are doing exactly the same, but yep. they're doing it in the vineyard. Gotcha. They're saying... Don't pick that because it's not ripe enough yep. or whatever or it's a bit damaged yep. or diseased. Just pick these high-quality grapes. Got you. So they're making that selection in the vineyard. Sorry. And then the other question I had, which I've forgotten. Yeah. Uh, which was how the winemaking. Yes. Did. Yeah. So off the So, harvest. yeah, you can hand pick or you can machine harvest. Um, pretty much the same. It depends on the style and quality of wine you're trying to produce. Then they come in and they are, they're p- picked into picking bins that hold about half a ton each, more mm-hmm. or less, and that's tipped into a machine called a destemmer. So the destemmer pulls the stems off the grapes and the grapes come out as little berries and then they go into a crusher. So it's two rollers and this is all in line. So it's mm-hmm. not like we're moving it from one to the other. The crusher is sort of two rollers that are rolling together. They crush the grapes. White wine then goes directly to a machine called a press. And what the press does is it squeezes the juice out of the grapes and the skins just get thrown away mm-hmm. to cattle feed or compost or whatever. With red wine, because you have to ferment it with skins, you'll crush it and then the skins and the juice go to the tank together and they get fermented together. Mm-hmm. And that fermenting process? How long? Depending on the wine, obviously. White wine, yeah. 10 to 15 days because yep. it's done at colder temperatures. Red wine, 7 five to seven because oh, yeah. it's done at warmer temperatures. Crazy. Yep. Yeah. That's so cool. a very Yeah, I know, but basic, that's, all yeah. we're, that's all we're yeah. looking forward to. Though. Yeah, that's exactly. uh, that's really, really interesting. Um, what would you not pair this with food-wise? Ooh. Well, let me think, actually. All right, yeah, you come up with something. So it's fuller. Maybe you take this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's fuller for... 
compared to what we've tasted today. But as a red, it is it's pretty light. It's pretty light yeah. bodied. Um, I wouldn't pair it with a curry. That is the worst thing I can imagine. Oh, I could never have a curry with a wine. You, there are some wines that go really well with really? curries, like ones that are slightly sweet, so they don't have too much alcohol is the key because curry, like hotness in food, makes wine taste more acidic and more alcoholic Mm. and makes tan and taste terrible. So if you've got like a nice white, slightly sweet wine, that's going to be delicious with curry. Okay. There you go. I've had dessert wine before too. That's I like that with with cheese and it's very, very... Thick. What's it with cheese? Everyone matches everything with cheese. I'm yeah. such a fussy old pain. What are you? What are you doing? I only with? do cheese after a meal. I do not think that you should be serving cheese before a meal. It does my head in. No, it was like dessert cheese. Dessert. Cheese. I would cheese. usually. I would usually have a red wine with cheese okay. because um, I've, I'm going to sound like a real wanker. I sound like I follow the French method where you have your main course, then cheese, then dessert. Oh, that's very cool. So. I might do that. We wouldn't yeah. understand we're not French enough. No, well, it just makes sense to me because you're savoury to savoury then to, sw- <laughs> to sweet. There's nothing worse than going savoury sweet and then back to savoury because you have to switch your wines around too much. Exactly. But on this, duck's the sort of classic pairing and I just think peaking duck pancakes. Mm. Mm. Yum. Yum. Because it's got you, enough you acid. You wouldn't pair a red wine with like brie, would you? I don't think many wines go with soft rind cheeses, to be honest. A Riesling, perfect. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. This is oh. why this is why your podcast is so good. We like the, you know, we <laughs> like the different. Yeah, time. that's what you want. It's, a, it's annoying to uh, it's annoying to agree with everything. A um, couple of questions then around just some things that I've heard of. When should uh, we use a decanter? She collects them. Ask her. Yeah. I have a passion for ugly decanters. Yeah. My favorite like, one. Actually, yeah, yeah. Like yeah she does. Ones. My, she, my favorite one's in the shape of a duck. I won't get it out now, but it's, it's called the duck, duck with a silver beak and its head comes yeah. off halfway. It's just the ugliest thing. <laughs> she there's loves something, it. There's something and really you actually ironic use it. about Of course I do. Yeah. <laughs> so you use a decanter for a couple of reasons. The traditional reason is if you have an aged wine, it's going to have a bit of sediment in it. So those kind of tannins, they break down and they create like um, more solids in the bottom of the bottle. So when you pour it in, you can control. If you leave just the bottom bit out, you'll see all the solids at the bottom. So you can just get the nice stuff so in you the decanter. To, you, when you use it, you meant to then not put the whole thing in. No, you leave the gunky stuff stuff in the bottom. You do it over a candle. See, so 100%. The- oh, I reckon I've seen so many people call decanters not knowing what to do and just dumping it all back into the decanter. Yeah, yeah. no. So if there's any solids, definitely leave them out. Leave that them is out. a valid thing, though. Yeah. Because? What? There's two reasons. Leaving. One is oh, to the other, take yes. out. So the other reason is that if, well, it's just to open up a wine. It's yep. to get more oxygen. So remember how we said that we swelled to get more oxygen through it so yep. we you can suck smell the it. the air through your teeth. Oxygen. Doing that. Yeah, oxygen just makes so much difference with wine. Even if you think about fruit, if you leave an apple on the bench for too long, it changes. It goes yep. kind of brown. It has a big effect on the wine if we get air through it. And some wines, a little bit of air just helps open them up, yeah. Yeah. lets them breathe, and it just makes the wine experience so much nicer. Unreal. We say they're closed if they don't have enough ox- oxygen in them sometimes. Mel and I will taste the wine and we'll go, oh, it doesn't have enough, so we'll leave it aside air for, a, for bit. a yeah. little bit and then come back. We actually <laughs> did an episode where we did... Airing it in the glass versus yeah. a decanter versus this and machine testing them out. thing. Yeah, yeah. right. Testing That's very interesting. Methods. I mean, I we decant certain wine styles. Where I always decant. So there's a great variety called Nebbiolo, um, which is very tannic. And we always, I think it needs exercise. It needs air put through it. So mm. I always decant Nebbiolo. Usually it's reds, though. You wouldn't do it with whites. No. 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 Whites don't last long enough in my house. Which <laughs> decent, lovely. Um, storing wine, how should we store it? Depending on the hide wine. it, hide it, yeah. Because okay. otherwise you don't. Yeah. <laughs> Is it like at home? I've got it on the wall, and I notice it sometimes. The sun comes in and gets like half of them, and I'm like, that would not be good for these wines right now. It hurts. You guys nearly just had a cardiac oh. arrest. I'm so sorry to bring that up. Move your wine Are you rack, okay? please. Move your wine rack. <laughs> I was joking again, guys. That's no, like... it's fine. We don't have the luxury of no one has cellars in their house, you know. Not yet. Um, and realistically, you're storing it against the wall, but how long is, how many years is it sitting there? 
the wine. Yeah. I only put it up like a few months ago. Yeah. So it's, so it's unlikely to be damaged. No. But no. if you're holding on to bottles for anything more than a couple of months, I'd move it. Yeah. Under your bed, in the bottom of a cupboard, away from heat changes and away from light changes. Okay. That's really good to know. And, and ideal temperature is like, what, 21 degrees or something? No. <laughs> I mean, what? Uh... <laughs> Look, anywhere between 12 and 18, mm. constancy of temperature is more important than the actual temperature. Okay. So, I mean, I have a cell a downstairs area that in winter's like five degrees and then it does get up to about 19 in winter. So we just bought an old fridge, mm. took the compressor out at the back, put a bit of foam in, put it down there so, in the old fridge. That's great. 50 buck old fridge. There you go. Yeah. I just remembered 21 degrees is the ideal sleeping temperature. Ah, oh, those oh, yeah. there you go. Um, with, uh, I need to send you, um, you girls something after this. So at home, my most prized bottle of wine I've got is, it's, and I'm actually interested, I'm never going to drink it because it was um, in 2004, uh, I won the under 11s grand final. They and gave you wine? No, they gave our... <laughs> My they, kind of footy team. No. <laughs> <laughs> Should have played. <laughs> and they gave all of the like parents and like the grandparents a bottle of wine to sell it. Oh. So it's got like our team photo oh. on it. And it's oh, the so bottle's cute. actually from like 2000, but the wine's 2000 and... Sorry, it's 2000 wine. Vintage. Yeah. Vintage. Yeah. 2004, we won the premiership. Yep. Yeah. So it's four years old already. Now it would be... 20, 20 years old. 20, 23 years 23 old. 23 years old. Um, Where's it from? Do you know? I'll have to send it to you. I'm not sure. But it would have been like a $5, $10 bottle of wine. So I'm not sure right. if it would be. be shit now. Yeah, it'd be shit. Mm. But it's very, because my, my I, they gave it to my nan. She passed away and she kept it all oh, those years. So I've still got this bottle no, of wine. Yeah, and yeah. it's just like, I'm just waiting for, I've got a son now who's six months old. And I reckon when he's like 18, he's going to come home one night. That's what I said, hide it. hide it. And he'll just like drink it with his mates. Yep. And My husband even does that. Like I have to put, we have a wine fridge. We store wine downstairs, but we have a wine fridge. And precious bottles because it's, you know, an even temperature I do put in there. But I have to literally pack wine bottles on top of it because he'll just open it up and go. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Most prized bottle of wines you've got or have drinking, drank, drank. Oh, drank. my God. I know it's hard to narrow it down because you've done incredible things. Okay. But like best, yeah, memory experience with a bottle. Two, I guess. I had an 1836 Saturn. Shit, but wow. The the, Saturn is a sweet white wine from Bordeaux in France. Mm -hmm. So it's like a sweet wine here. It's made using Botrytis. Um, Yeah, it was just, I mean, it was past its best, but it was exciting. And in Germany, once they have a big barrel that for a thousand years, Years they say that they've been topping this one barrel up, so the wine is a thousand years old. It's not what one percent would be a thousand years yeah. old, but a glass is twelve hundred euros. Wow! And I they gave me a glass, and it was actually really good. It was Riesling. Actually, you'd hope so. Yeah, it was. I was expecting it to be because I can't imagine that that thing's topped all the time. Yeah. And they're mm. taking wine, so it's oxidising, and I'm thinking it's, like oh, it's going to be shite. Like, yeah. yeah, it was actually mm. it was actually pretty good wine. But whether or not they they take it out of the barrel and then they sort of go away, mm. and you're, you're wondering, mm, is that really what I'm getting? But anyway, that yeah. was was that the most expensive special. wine you've ever had? On probably by the glass, yeah. Yeah, I mean. What about bottle? What's the most Domain flex- Romani Conti would be probably the most expensive wine. Current vintage goes for about eight grand. And yeah, I've that's pretty done them back to uh, just after the war. Wow. Second World War. Wow. This is the thing about the MW. You get taken on these amazing trips. That's incredible. Trips. Yeah. yeah. But I've, well, I've you know, had you'd... been very lucky. Yes, but you're obviously very talented at, wow. at the... Jesus, on these MW trips is just to piss up. I mean, we yeah. would... <laughs> We would turn up and we'd be so hungover, like you, people you would, would be running out, that one vomiting because we've been drinking whiskey all it night. It explains and... the five percent pass rate. Yeah, yeah, possibly. And I did it with a really loose crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of Scotsmen. That's great. <laughs> How about you? What's your fave? Do you know what? It's funny when you first said like wine memory. I didn't go back to the most 
expensive yeah. bottles. Like I've and I've tasted ports and stuff that have been like a hundred years old and really special stuff. But I think about oh my god, this is such a You're lame gonna story. Cry, I'm gonna I'm no, I'm gonna tell this story. It's embarrassing. But when I first got into the wine industry. I was just so excited and all of a sudden I'm surrounded by all this wine and I was like, I'd been drinking Goon a year ago and it was just so special. And the first time I had a glass of champagne, I oh, took it I love to this the story. toilet. I was like out in the pub with like all these people. It was really cool. Everyone's just drinking nice champagne. and But I really wanted to enjoy the champagne. I really wanted to treasure it. So I took it to the bathroom and just sat on the toilet and sipped this champagne and had this like... 15 minutes to myself, oh, just enjoying every that's sip. That's awesome. Sort of. No, it's, yeah. just like, it's kind of weird. <laughs> okay, it's kind of weird. But it's kind of, you imagine the, being you're out You're in with, the right field, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. 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 Being out with your mates and someone opens some champagne and then one it was little dickhead Bella runs off. Park. Park. Oh, just no, it, that's... $400 oh, Park, yeah. sparkling. I wasn't just going to toss it back. I just needed a moment to enjoy it. Um, On the toilet. Yeah. On the toilet. It's, it's, that is very... That, that's beautiful. I will... <laughs> What about you? Yeah. Well, do you have a wine moment or do you just not You know what? In a real cringy way, it's for me who I'm sharing the bottle with. I agree. I think. And that's like the most important thing. But I will tell you one funny story. It's it's not a highlight of my life. But once I, when I was like 18, I went to um, Hong Kong on a footy trip. And it was like the second time I'd been overseas. I had no idea about like money in terms of like ex- uh, exchange rates like didn't know what oh, was happening that could I had, be dangerous. I had no idea and the story i wish i had the name of this bottle but like there was this massive bottle of like champagne on this thing and i was like i'm gonna buy that for everyone and like everyone was like yeah do it i was like i had no money i was an 18 year old but i had in that trip um i think i had five thousand dollars in that trip like saved up for spending money for the whole trip and i know I've never told this story before because it's it's just not funny. But I remember I got home after that first night and I'd bought a bottle of champagne and a cigar and the next morning I had about $200 left. <gasps> and you don't, and you even, don't know even, know even know what the cigar was. was. Do you remember what the cigar was? I remember was? I woke up and I was in a world of hurt, like just the worst pain I've ever been in my life. <laughs> and poor. And but at least in Hong Kong, you can have some cheap noodles. Oh, uh, it's just like to this. I still feel sick about it to this day. Oh no! Yeah, we do those days sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> We've had those days. So I remember calling like my mum and dad on like not even call my Send dad. Me you would have killed money. me. Well, I was just like I don't know what to do. So how long were you there for? I was there for a week. And you had two hundred bucks. Left. left, yeah. You should have hit your mates up. Oh, I did. Yeah. After that, I was like, you guys <laughs> owe me a bit. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's the worst thing is you don't remember it. That's really I don't sad because clearly it was something well, very I'll tell you special. What, after that as well, the guy, one of the other guys, they they remember it. They don't remember it, but they remember what it did to them because it, yeah. it was a... I mean, it sounds like a good night. Yeah. Well, Maybe it was worth it. I just remember thinking from that, like from that day, I haven't actually had champagne really ever again because it just... Gave Triggering. me like the mer- like, <laughs> just the money, and then also like the but what the, else the did migraine you that I had. Drink that night. Mate, it was just champagne. It was the first time I'd ever drank champagne. And how much did you drink? It was a ma- it was a big bottle. It was like oh, this like big. A it was like a magnum or something. or something like that. Yeah. Oh, okay. It wasn't one. It was like a just a big boy like this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which is twelve bottles. Yes. I bet it was a good night though. Not really. No. <laughs> no, it wasn't worth that at all. Oh, no. well, I don't I think I even got to one. smoke the cigar either. I think it just sort of got passed around and I didn't even get any of it. Oh, God. So, anyway. Grim. Yeah. <laughs> See, I told you I was an MW, massive wanker. Yep. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Hey, um, top, I really appreciate your time. It's been absolutely incredible. Have we finished that, Red? Wine making? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, any questions for me? I actually have one. Yeah. I was thinking about this on the way in. Pour a glass of wine. Yeah, we, yeah I'm, I'm not done. We <laughs> know be. Is it, um, spoke with Richie Vanderberg a couple of years ago. He's got a winery. Yeah. I know Dylan Grimes has Who? a winery. He does. Oh, the fish, Richie Vanderberg, the sea the, thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and I've heard that Luke Hodge is a big one on the Reds because it's better for carbs and stuff in the off season. Is this a thing? Is there a footy thing wine. that people are into wine? Well, definitely like beer is obviously like one of the worst. Jesus Christ, look at that for a pool. It's, it's fine. Is that okay? It's still under the logo, so. Thank you. <laughs> um, 
the wine I know it's one of those things that um it's got less carbohydrates in it. I yeah. Think. Like yeah. A, yeah, it does. Than a beer. Then it depends what you're drinking, but it's got less in it. So like the players would go to wine. But you get mad headaches. <laughs> Reds gives me like a real, real mad headache. <laughs> so it's not that it's not that you're all into like the flavour and everything. It's 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 what have you gathered highly today? Practical. You think, <laughs> 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 I, I think you've gathered that probably not. But I think those guys, like I have heard, yeah. Dylan Grimes has his own winery. A lot yeah. of those boys are into it, and um, yeah, I won't speak on behalf of any athlete, but a lot of the guys do love their their wines. Sounds well, good to hear. Uh, Rob Dolan was a Port Adelaide footballer yep. like before it was National League and his nick- his nickname was Riesling because mm, he used to like having sweet. a little Riesling there you go at the end of a game yeah hey what would I love to do we should actually do I want to if you're happy to continue a friendship yeah it'd be awesome we should do something like I genuinely think we should get like my crew along your crew along it'd be the weirdest mix of people of all time <laughs> but we could do like a wine taste like an event yeah, some sort sure. of event, some yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Let's like, do it. Yeah, I, I really, really want people to go and um and check out your podcast as well, Wine with Megan Mel. And I had a business idea for you, didn't I? Oh, you did. Yeah, no. We're because what into I'm going to do is I'm going to read out these names of these wines and and put them in like the prequel of when we're chatting. Yep. And tell everyone to get uh this nepenthe i'll tell them what the wines yeah. you tell them what they are yeah please do go out and get before you listen to the podcast the 2023 nepenthe adelaide hill sauvignon blanc yep sapling yard rosé is probably going to be quite hard because they're very small producers so just really get any, any rosé yeah. well, we don't care about that we don't as care. We said. Yep. and then there's tarawara 2016 pinot um it may be a bit hard to get the 2016, but even if you got the current release, you'll still see what we're sort of talking Great, about. Great, because I think what could be so cool is if you get these and you're with friends and if you're listening to this or you yeah. know, by yourself or with your partner, mm-hmm. listen to it and do it with us and, and go because we're going to do this business idea. I'm going to invest in your podcast. And <laughs> I want to like plan it so that we can send these out to all your people, listen to it, and then while we're drinking, we can do it. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's a great idea. Yeah. No one's done it. And this is one thing that's always amazed me. You know how there's all these cooking programs? Yeah. Why is there no wine show? 100%. (laughs) That's Like, seriously. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We could have blind tasting competitions. It'd be so funny. No, because that's the biggest thing ever. I mean, they do it about baking and glass blowing, for God's sake. But do people always come up to you and be like, all right, I'm going to put two wines in front. One's a good one. Yes. Yeah. And can you you can do it? Not now. Yeah? Not now. You do it. You do all right. Oh, look, I have an idea, but not certainly not to the extent. And the thing is, when you're doing you it at that level, yeah. you're not enjoying wine because you're yeah. constantly you're like, Ugh. oh, I'm so freaked out about yeah. it. Yeah. I remember Pete said to me, if you don't pass this time, you're not doing it again because I can't put up with you. You're unbearable. Mm. The divorce rate of people doing MW is really high. Really? Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. He missed his chance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I know. I don't think we were married then. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it no, we went it. Yeah, there you then. go. It explains it. Thank you so much. So, yeah, have you got any events coming up or anything that we can catch you at? Is there anything in the works? Uh, just the pod at the just moment. Just the pod at the moment? Yeah, okay. We'll head there. We're in what's called OND in the wine trade, October, November, December. So no one wants to do anything because yeah. it's all just about people doing Christmas parties and we've got Melbourne Cup and so yeah. there's never anything on at this time of the year. It's good. Unreal. Right. <laughs> it is good. Because we love the general public. I... <laughs> Mel does. We'll head to uh, the link in the show notes, uh, guys and girls, and make sure you check out the pod. Um, I'm sure you're going to get a lot of keen people um, joining your community now. Me casa, su casa, as I like to say. Thank you. I think it's uh, German. Yeah, you are blessed, Manuel. Yeah. Uh, Dankeschön. Normal. Dankeschön. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty What's sure you're speaking different I lived in Chile for eight years, mate, so Meekasa oh, no. was we too. We get along. <laughs> we, 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 I think we'd have some fun together. Yeah. We should go. We should go kick oh, on no. after this. Yes. Come on. Come on. <laughs> oh. If you're buying the champagne. I'll buy the, I'll oh, buy yeah, the champagne. Yeah, it has to be the same yeah. one. I will yeah. be there. Only in Hong Kong. my favourite. Yeah. Only in Hong oh, Kong. Okay. Hey, last one. Sorry, last, last one. Favourite restaurant in Melbourne oh. for, for food and wine. Scopri. Where is it? I've never heard of that. Wow. No, that's why we like it. Yeah, okay. It is in on Nicholson Street in uh, technically Carlton. Yeah. But it's just that side and Fitzroy's on the other side. That's my hood. Tiny restaurant. Um, wine list is absolutely amazing. The food is outstanding. Don't even order. Just tell them to feed you. I it's love Italian. That. It's white cloth service but without pretension. 
We went there the other day because we had a voucher. The voucher was for $350. <laughs> we spent $600, just the two of us, Pete wow. and I, date, like, lunchtime date, because the wine. So and good. It, they're just fabulous. The guy that owns it, Anthony, is just delightful. They grow a lot of their own produce. They make their own Bresaola. It is extraordinary. Scott and Pree. all the wine people go there because you can take your own wine and they'll charge you corkage yep. but per bottle. And they'll change glasses. I did my 50th there um. upstairs in the private dining room. And we had, I don't know, 20 odd wines, all really good wines. And I said, Yeah, taste them all. Happy to taste them. But they changed every time they served the wine, wow. they changed glasses. And they weren't all wine people. The food is, yeah, that's my favorite place. Solid it for me. Mm. I'd say Bahari. I shouldn't have said anything. Oh, no, yeah, no, 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 no. No, no, all that's the a thing of giving go. your secrets away. But, you know, I'm sure they're very <laughs> pr- proud yeah. of that. Bahari, around the corner here in Richmond, it's Greek food. Oh, I'm a big Greek man. Get Greek food, try the Greek wine, get something called oh. Assertico. It's a Greek white wine, Assertico. It is delicious. It'll it's blow your fantastic. mind. Assertico. Have a bit of lamb shoulder. Okay. Throw it out. Um, I'll give you mine, but I think I hope that you guys approve. And it's more like the experience, the food, the wine, and again, not knowing much about wine, it's just I know it's expensive, so I'm assuming it's good, is um, Francois. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a classic. It's just a vibe, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You can't have a bad time there. No. The thing with Francois, though, is th- there's so much to choose from. I always kind of get a little bit overwhelmed by the menu, and I always end up in ordering the same thing. Yeah. I always just go like, at least get me one thing I know I'm going to like, and then the rest of them is like, you just <gasps> you do it. I was there a couple of months ago, the crab omelette. I've never. I don't know if they do it all the time. Okay. And I was with people who just ordered mm. some sort of extra things, and this omelette, oh, my God, it was amazing. Do you and do the, the escargot wine is amazing. as like a, yeah. just a bit of a flex? Or? Escargot is okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, they're a bit chewy. It's not a – but it's and more just the vibe of going there. and tin, you know. Yeah. No, it's and the fries are fantastic. Yeah, they are good. They are um, really good. So that'd be mine. Not that anyone asked, but just in case you were wondering, <laughs> it um, is good. Last one. I'm going to. Um, but you got to cross the river. That's the one thing I hate about. Are you north? I'm Warrandyte, mate. I'm out in the the bush. Have you been to Embers? Yes. Yeah. Holy yeah. shit! <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry but, like, that's like I went to a mate's. Um, we had a bucks on the weekend, right? And it was a bit more of a fancier bucks, and we had a big long lunch. And the chef from Embers came. Oh, wow. And it was the, I was saying to the boys the other day, the best food I've had, like, cooked yeah. for you, you oh. know, like, not at a restaurant. Yeah. They cooked Tom Hawk's eggs on the fire. Yeah. Like, they just charred. But name. inside, they were just unbelievable. It was so we good. We did a Christmas party had a party Christmas party there. that was good. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's good. Embers, that's in Warrandyte. Yep. yep. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Um, okay, I think that's, oh, so last week, no, I'm going to... The Butcher tomorrow. What's it called? Botswana Butcher. Botswana Butcher. Yeah, have you been there? No, I haven't. Okay. I'll tell you later. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me cut that out. Okay. Um, <laughs> hey, thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. It's um, absolutely incredibly uh, awesome to get on the show. I think I'm a little bit drunk. But, <laughs> That's okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've kept getting to spit it out. We're going to leave all, all the uh, wines for you. I noticed the Pinot's gone, but the Riesling well, is still Zach's sitting there. Well, has been filling us up to the brim. So it's sort of I've, I've got hard. the Barossa and Shiraz. Do you want me to leave that as well? Yeah, yeah, leave it nah, behind. Oh, you better. So, <laughs> yeah. We're not going to drink it. So. <laughs> Good. Um, thank you so much. And Thanks for yeah. having us on. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, did you enjoy it? Loved it. Yeah, yeah it was great. Yeah, good. Thanks. <laughs> I like all, and we all look very pink and rosy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good light yeah. for it's, us. It's Real good. vibing. Yeah. yeah. Great. See you guys. <laughs>